Shadow of the Unicorn was a ZX Spectrum game that had an entire interface all of its own. With its 16K Shadow ROM and built-in joystick interface, it goes for a pretty penny these days. But due to the work by Stephen Smith of ProjectSpecky.com, we have a modern recreation, and one that won't bankrupt us like the game bankrupted its creators. And we're going to build it right now. Mark Fixes Stuff This video is sponsored by PCBWay. You can get an instant quote on a variety of services, or browse a library of talented makers' designs, add them to your cart, and have them delivered directly to your door. The Micro Plus interface was developed by Microgen and was intended to usher in a new era of 64K ZX Spectrum gaming, but its dev costs sunk the company and only one title was released, Shadow of the Unicorn. We'll be recreating and testing this interesting piece of hardware in this video. We have this board, lovingly recreated by Stephen Smith. Into that we'll pop a socketed 74 LS32 logic chip. We'll be installing a 16K EEPROM programmed with the additional game code required. We'll also need five signal diodes. These are 1N4148 parts. We'll be putting a D sub 9 connector on, which will provide a joystick interface. And finally, this pre cut and pin ZX Spectrum Edge connector will be soldered onto the board. Let's get started. A quick clean with isopropyl alcohol. This removes any fingerprints or contamination that might hinder soldering. Shiny. We'll pop in the logic socket first, taking care to line up the notch with the markings on the board. This will house our quad 2 input OR gate. A little smattering of Smurf's blodge to hold it in place. And we can solder it into the board. Some flux to help the solder take. making sure we have good, solid joints. Now the EEPROM socket, again, taking note of the silkscreen orientation. A touch more of the Gargamel's curse. And we can solder this socket into place. More flux. Sockets are really easy to solder and you reduce the risk of damaging your sensitive parts with a hot tool.
next those diodes. These are 1N4148 signal diodes. They're not meant to handle large currents or voltages, but help signals a bit like traffic lights. Diodes like this are used as a one-way valve to stop current flowing the wrong way in your circuit. The line marks the cathode, so match this up to the board. We'll install that Spectrum Edge connector next. I get these directly from thefuturas8bit.com. It's so much easier than cutting and pinning them myself, and they work out really good value as well. Finally, we need to put the DB9 socket into the board. These have strong lugs and hold in place well. Ensuring that the socket is firmly installed, we solder the lugs first. I like to fill up the hole on the lugs because this gives structural support to the socket. Then we solder the signal pins. This port will take a traditional joystick in the Atari style. I think it is anyway. It's pretty amazing that it was included in the interface for the game, but of course, you wouldn't be able to use this as a joystick interface for any other game. We'll clean off this flux first. Finished. Well, except for programming that EEPROM and installing the logic chip. Stephen discovered that we need to use a scrambled version of the ROM. The descrambled version that's used for emulators simply won't work.
programming takes a matter of seconds. Let's install this now. Observing the notch on the chip and the notch on the socket, we pop the EEPROM into place. A label will stop UV killing our programmed EEPROM. We also do the same for the 74LS32. Now it's time to test. We'll use this 48K ZX Spectrum. This would have been the exact target machine for the game back in the day. For loading, we'll use this TZX Tweeno that we built together in a previous video. Ensuring that the power is off, we insert our cartridge and... Then disaster struck. With the sockets I used, the interface wouldn't fit into the back of the computer. I should have used low profile sockets. To test the interface, I'm going to install the logic and EEPROM directly into the PCB. Luckily, my desolder station makes this a quick job. That's the logic out. And that's the EEPROM out. Now to solder them back into the PCB. Done. but the interface still only just mates with the edge connector. I've decided I'm going to desolder the edge connector and allow some more of the pin length through. That's better. Lesson learned. Use the full length of the connector pins and low profile sockets if you make this project. Unless of course you have a better idea, let me know in the comments section below. Now that our expansion fits into the back of our spectrum, we can push in the power. The interface jumped into life, giving us three options in the Shadow of the Unicorn menu. Load from tape, load from microdrive, or align the cassette deck. Side two of the original tape had an alignment audio track recorded onto it. But we've gone digital since then, so we won't be needing that. We'll just go straight to loading the game. When this game was released, it came with the interface as well as a large printed map 
and a novella with an introductory story over 100 pages long. The outlay of developing the Micro Plus cartridge system, as well as developing the 64K game, was enough to sink Microgen. And in fact, the company that bought them also went bankrupt just six months later. With the game loaded, I played for about 20 minutes. I think you really need to read the book. I can see the potential of the system. The game is quite a complex adventure and I think I could easily sit down and get my teeth into it. Back in the day though, I think that 11 year old Mark Fix's stuff would find it a bit, well, dull. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'd like to say a massive thanks to my Patreon supporters who made this video possible. You can join them and get your name on the screen in lights at patreon.com forward slash stuff. Thanks for watching. Maybe you'd like to watch one of these other videos. Do it or I'll send the gummies round. Bye.